Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. This is the Proxon Quick Change Tool Post. It doesn't come with the machine, but it was one of the first accessories I bought, and I found it completely invaluable. It has a couple of problems though. It's held in with this stock M8 bolt. And there's a significant amount of slop around the bolt when it's loose. This means when tramming the post and, and truing it up, it's very difficult to tell where the post is actually going to end up when it's tightened. And quite often, tightening the tool post causes it to shift slightly, which can be very frustrating when I've just spent a lot of time with an indicator truing it up. This is what I've come up with to solve this problem. This shaft replaces the bolt. This shaft avoids the problem of the tool post shifting around while it's being secured in place. This shoulder at the bottom very closely matches the register on the base of the tool post here. Now with the tool post in place but completely untightened it's extremely stable and while it will rotate freely it doesn't shift around or wobble. held in place with this custom nut which is intentionally much wider than the bolt so that the down clamping force is more widely distributed making the tool post more stable. The washer adds a little more stability so that when the nut is being tightened the tool post itself is even less likely to shift than before. I made the shaft and nut from this piece of 20mm hot rolled 42 CRMO4, a German steel grade similar to 4140. The grade is well suited to making shafts and is easy to machine once the scale is removed. Most of the shaft length is fairly narrow, so I cut a centre in the end and used the tailstock to keep it steady. The first couple of passes were very rough. This small lathe can't cut deep enough to go through the scale, so I had to scrape it off carefully. This length will be the part of the shaft protruding for the compound, and the section currently held in the chuck will be reused to make the nut. To make sure the shaft isn't vulnerable to stress at the bottom, I used this large radius insert to form the corner.
There are a few passes left to go, but not enough room for this insert between the shaft and the live centre, so I switched to a DCMT insert with a narrower point and a smaller radius. making sure not to mess up the radius of the base. This shoulder was turned down to fit snugly into the pocket on the base of the tool post. I need the tool post to turn freely but with as little slop as possible. The basic shaft dimensions were now to size, so I chamfered the corners and touched up the radius before moving on to the thread. The thread needs to be long enough for the nut to tighten flush against the top face of the tool post, but no longer to keep the shaft as rigid as possible. This groove will sit just below the top of the tool post and marks the end of the thread. While the shoulder has been turned to a snug fit in the bottom pocket, the rest of the shaft has been turned to a loose fit in the through hole to ensure the tool post isn't over constrained. It's still too large for cutting an M8 thread though, because the through hole is oversized for the M8 bolt. This thread started out beautifully but ended up being one of the worst I've ever cut while still being just about recoverable. The problem isn't immediately obvious on film but the compound was set to the wrong angle causing the thread to be seriously misshapen. I didn't realise until the thread was almost complete and barely enough material was left to clean it up. All the geometry on this side of the shaft is now complete so time for a test fit. The register seems to sit snugly against the inner diameter of the pocket as planned. The shaft is a loose fit in case there is any con concentricity error in the tool post. If it was a tight fit, differences between the through hole and the pocket would exert side forces on the tool post and prevent it from sitting true on the compound. I flip the part round to start work on the nut. Once the external operations on the nut are complete, it will be parted off and the rest of the shaft features will be machined. The knot diameter needs to be 19mm, so very little material needs to be removed after the mill scale. The finish was showing signs of chatter which is unsurprising given the thin diameter of the section held in the chuck. This part is going to be drilled and bored anyway so I put a centre in so I could improve the finish of the OD using the tailstock. Much smoother cutting and way better finish.
While the nut is still attached to the rest of the shaft, it's much easier to hold in a chuck or collet due to the extra length. That's why the next operation I chose is milling the hex in the top part of the nut, as this requires the part to be held with plenty of clearance for the milling cutter. ER collets aren't as good at holding very short parts, as they are primarily designed as a spindle collet. The setup for milling this hex turned out to be quite complicated, so I made a separate video about some of the detail. Click the link at the top right now if you haven't watched it already. I used this slip of paper to locate the surfaces of the nut with the cutter. The paper is 0.1mm thick, which is easily accurate enough to locate both dimensions when milling a hex for a wrench. I use the same technique to locate the top. The Proxon mill isn't fast enough to run this cutter at its rated speed and feeds, but despite the noise I seem to get at a reasonable finish. As usual for this machine, the depth of cut had to be kept very small. Supporting the part with this V-block helped to make this operation smoother, but it was tricky to set up with the available tooling. Watch the video linked at the top right now to see how I set it up. Cutting the next face was just a question of rotating the hex collet block in the vise by one of its faces. To ensure the faces were exactly the same width, I'd set up the vise stop to locate the collet block precisely. Check out the video at the top right now for how I made this vise stop. The rest of the faces were machined to the same depth as the first, so I'll skip the rest of them as they're basically all the same. The nut is now ready to be parted off from the rest of the stock. Parting off is much easier when the part has a centre hole, as the parting tool cuts less effectively close to the centre. This nut will require a through hole, so it makes sense to drill before parting off. This end of the shaft will be threaded to screw into the carriage, so a lot of material has to be removed from the outer diameter. The length of this bottom thread is important to get right. It needs to be as long as possible to get decent engagement with the threaded hole, but if it's too long it will interfere with the movement of the compound the way the old bolt did here. The width of the flange is also critical, as it needs to fit inside the pocket in the tool post when screwed firmly against the surface. I turned out to have worked out the length of the stock pretty accurately and had exactly the right length available for the thread. It needs to be turned down to M8, so there was a lot of material to be removed.
I switched to a small radius insert for the finish pass and to tidy up the corner. The thread needed a decent chamfer at the start, but the edge of the flange just needed the corner to be knocked off. The flange needs to be seated firmly and precisely against the top of the compound, so this groove makes sure there's no interference with the end of the thread. It also makes cutting the thread easier. There isn't room for a normal chamfer tool here, so I used the edge of this threading tool to chamfer this end of the thread. The shortness of the thread and the lack of space means cutting the thread with this tool towards the chuck would be difficult and risk damaging the part. Instead I used this internal threading tool on the other side to cut away from the chuck with the lathe in reverse. The first step is to locate the outer diameter with the point of the tool. Never forget to check the pitch after the scratch pass. I got away with forgetting this time. Cutting away from the chuck completely removes the risk of crashing into the part or the chuck, so it's much easier to run the lathe faster. Carbide tools cut better at higher speeds, so this tends to give a better finish. This thread turned out way better form than the first one, and with a much better finish too. I wanted the thread to seat firmly in the compound, so to ensure it was cut as accurately as possible I used thread wires to check it. A set of thread wires is cheap, and they can be used to measure a thread very precisely. They're tricky to use, but well worth the learning investment. I'll cover how to use them correctly in a later video. Once the thread was cut to the right depth, I returned the threading tool to its starting position and removed any protruding burr by running it along the outside diameter of the thread. The mounting is now ready for a test fit. As the nut isn't ready yet, I'm using this piece of scrap as a spacer, and a stock M8 nut. So far, so good. All that's needed now is to complete the nut by finishing the threaded hole through the middle. The standard tap drill size is 6.8mm, but I don't have one this size. I drilled it to 7mm, as this still leaves enough material for a thread for this application. Using a reamer to reach final dimension reduced the chances of overshooting the target hole size, as twist drills can easily cut too large if their grind isn't perfect. The part has been re-chucked since this face was parted off. As this is the clamping surface, I wanted to ensure it was perfectly perpendicular to the threaded hole, so I refaced it. I recently bought an internal single point threading tool small enough for M8 threads, so I thought I'd try it out on this part. The scratch pass looks fine.
With the third pass, I crashed the tool into the part. It wasn't a particularly hard crash, but it wedged the taper of the tool into the hole, and with the lead screw engaged, the whole lathe was now locked up. To free everything up, I ended up needing to disengage the screw and disassemble the tool post. This was clearly a risky threading operation, and rather than try again, I decided to use a tap. As usual, I use my shop-made tap follower. Click the link at the top right now to see how I made it. The tap wrench is too long to swing round over the bed, which makes tapping a bit clumsy. Finally, I made a custom washer to give the tool post a bit of extra stability and a pleasing appearance. Brass is a little softer than steel, which allows it to yield slightly and give a really solid contact all round. It should also have lower friction, reducing the chances that turning force while tightening the nut will cause the tool post to rotate. That's way too fast. The upgrade makes a world of difference to trimming the tool post and adjusting the tool angle. I can't really tell if it's made the tool post more rigid, but it's definitely worth the effort. Let me know what you think of this solution and whether you're interested in seeing more upgrades and improvements to my machines. Check back soon for videos of some tool making I've been working on, which should be ready to upload shortly.